One of the most distinctive features of Starship is its forward flaps, which give the spacecraft a truly unique appearance unlike anything built before. In this video, we'll explore what these flaps do, the key improvements SpaceX has made to them, and how those changes impact the vehicle's performance. Trust me, there's more brilliance behind this design than you might expect. Let's begin with the most fundamental question. Why does Starship even need those flaps in the first place? Measuring 9 meters wide and stretching 50 meters from nose to tail in its Block 1 version and 52.1 meters in Block 2, Starship serves as the upper stage, spacecraft, tanker, and lander of SpaceX's fully reusable two-stage launch system of the same name. This means Starship will re-enter Earth's atmosphere and land intact, ready for its next flight. However, Starship won't be returning in space shuttle style. Instead of flying, gliding, or slicing through the atmosphere, nose or tail first, it freefalls belly first, perpendicular to the ground. At the beginning of the RE entry process, Starship shuts down its Raptor engines, tips over onto its belly, and begins a controlled fall back to Earth. It uses a combination of small pressurized gas thrusters and four large flaps to remain stable during descent, much like a skydiver adjusts their body, arms, and legs to steer and stay balanced. Starship relies on its forward and aft flaps to maintain precise control of its orientation and attitude. During re-entry, Starship uses a heat shield made up of around 18,000 ceramic tiles to slow down from orbital speeds roughly Mach 25 or about 7.5 kilometers per second, to subsonic velocities. Throughout this intense phase, the same flaps play a crucial role in adjusting the vehicle's angle of attack, helping to manage both its trajectory and the extreme heat it encounters. While the concept is promising, early test flights revealed that the front flaps didn't perform particularly well in the initial design. In the Block 1 design, the forward flaps were positioned 180 degrees apart. When deployed, their lower edges ran parallel to the ground and perpendicular to the outboard edges, forming a distinct 90-degree angle at the lower corner. From the side, each flap was thicker near the hinge and tapered toward the tip, meaning the two surfaces were not parallel. While the design looked striking and helped reduce weight, the tapered shape added complexity to the heat shield. Elon admits that this design isn't perfect, and that really shows. During the fourth flight, plasma burned through the hinge of Ship 29's right side forward flap. As a result, large sections of the flap were torn off, likely including the rearmost hinge. Remarkably, the control surface still functioned well enough to help the vehicle perform its signature flip and burn maneuver, rapidly transitioning from a horizontal to a vertical orientation. With the forward flap still glowing red hot but providing just enough control, Ship 29 successfully reignited its sea-level Raptor engines and made a soft landing in the Indian Ocean. On the fifth flight, the upgraded heat shield performed significantly better than Ship 29's configuration. However, some burn-through was still observed on at least one of the forward flaps. In the sixth flight, similar damage occurred, with burn-through again affecting at least one forward flap Yet despite Ship 31 still relying largely on the older style heat shield, it successfully survived re-entry and achieved a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean. So following the transition to Block 2, SpaceX introduced a completely redesigned forward flap, and it's safe to say it's a significantly improved. Immediately, we couldn't help but admire its new shape. In terms of height, the new flaps are slightly smaller than the previous design though not by a significant margin. The length at the hinge area remains similar. The bottom edge is now angled, and the outboard edge is shorter, eliminating the 90-degree corner seen in the earlier version. The new flaps are also considerably thinner, which undoubtedly reduces their dry mass. Unlike the older design, the revised flaps no longer feature a tapered profile. Instead, they maintain a uniform thickness throughout. As a result, both faces are parallel, simplifying the heat shield design considerably. Because they are thinner, they are reinforced internally to remain sturdy when the spacecraft re-enters the atmosphere. In addition to their new shape, the forward flaps have been completely repositioned. They have been moved higher and closer to the leeward side of the vehicle, significantly reducing the excess drag associated with the previous design. Aerodynamically, the new static surfaces are almost invisible to the airflow. 
When retracted, the flaps tuck nearly entirely behind the nose cone. The leading edge cap has also been greatly simplified, making heat shield installation easier due to its reduced size and complexity. Functionally, the flaps still serve the same purpose, opening to raise the nose and closing to lower it. However, with the static arrow now hidden behind the nose cone, there's no longer any unintentional aerodynamic interference with the aft flaps. This change enhances re-entry reliability, as both the hot gas seal and hinge assembly are now shielded from direct exposure to plasma flow. Starting with the fourth flight, seals were added to the hinge gaps in the flap mechanism. This was crucial, as allowing hot plasma to flow through these areas would quickly damage the unprotected components. The addition of these seals was a key factor in enabling the Block 1 spacecraft to survive re-entry and successfully land in the ocean. In the new design, SpaceX has taken simplification even further, resulting in these hinges that are not only faster to produce, but also more robust and reliable. Unfortunately, despite two Block 2 flights, the forward flap designs have yet to undergo proper testing. This is not due to any flaw in the design itself but rather a result of various propulsion issues, which are beyond the scope of this discussion. In theory, if everything functions as intended, Starship should be capable of near-total reuse. Wait, why only near? Well, SpaceX has acknowledged that one component, the heat shield, has not yet been reused. Currently, Starship uses approximately 18,000 ceramic heat shield tiles to protect its underside, similar in concept to the system used on NASA's space shuttle. However, there's a key difference. On the shuttle, each tile was custom-shaped to fit a specific location, which provided excellent protection, but made manufacturing and replacement a time-consuming process that could take months. In contrast, Starship uses standardized hexagonal tiles, significantly streamlining production, installation, and maintenance, and enabling much faster turnaround times. While these tiles are highly effective at withstanding the extreme heat of reentry, they are unlikely to be fully reusable. Made of ceramic, they are vulnerable to cracking and can expand or contract with temperature fluctuations. As Elon Musk humorously described it, you got a whole bunch of dinner plates stuck on the side of a rocket that's shaking like hell. Well, SpaceX did try to improve the system, though. Starting with the fifth flight, they introduced an enhanced ablative secondary layer beneath the tiles, offering extra protection when tiles degrade during re-entry. According to Musk, the updated tiles are about twice as durable as earlier versions, offering significantly better performance. Flights 5 and 6 have already demonstrated the benefits of these upgrades though the tiles still fall short of being truly reusable. To achieve full reusability, SpaceX will need a new heat shield design, or rather a return to an old one. Back in November, Elon Musk mentioned plans to bring back a metal heat shield. While that might sound unconventional to some, longtime followers of Starship's development will recognize it as a familiar concept. This exotic metallic heat shield would be cooled by flowing liquid methane through tiny holes on its surface. This method would allow the shield to sweat and dissipate heat, preventing the steel structure from melting during re-entry. Musk envisions this new shield being made of steel, covering half the vehicle, and incorporating a cooling system that uses either water or methane to manage the intense thermal load of atmospheric re-entry. This approach is not entirely new to rocketry. It is based on a well-established method known as film cooling, which is commonly used in rocket engine design. Film cooling works by injecting a cooler fluid, often fuel, between the hot combustion gases and the engine's inner walls to form a protective barrier that insulates the structure. This can be done using either liquid or gaseous propellants. The simplest way to achieve this is by placing a higher concentration of fuel injectors along the outer edge of the injector face. Because rocket engines typically operate with a fuel-rich mixture, fuel is usually preferred. The excess fuel creates a ring around the chamber's perimeter where there is not enough oxidizer to ignite it, resulting in a cooler region that protects the chamber walls. As the unburned fuel flows along the walls, it acts as a thermal buffer. Much of it likely vaporizes, forming a boundary layer that absorbs significant heat during the phase transition from liquid to gas. In high heat zones, such as the engine throat, Engineers often drill small holes in the chamber wall to allow liquid fuel to seep directly onto the surface. 
further improving cooling efficiency, applying this principle to a metallic heat shield could represent a major step toward making Starship fully reusable. Some of the metallic tiles were installed on Starship on flights 7 and 8. But like the new forward flap design, they never got a chance to be tested. They will most likely be installed on the upcoming Flight 9. Hopefully this flight will be successful, so we can see all these upgrades in action. In a recent tweet, he expressed strong confidence that the company will achieve a fully reusable heat shield by 2025 and perfect the technology by 2026. In addition to testing new upgrades, the upcoming flight will mark the first attempt at cargo deployment by Starship. During the roughly hour-long coast phase above the atmosphere, SpaceX plans to open the vehicle's payload bay door and, for the first time, eject metal simulators, which are dummy next-generation Starlink satellites. While these are just inert masses, they represent a key step toward enabling Starship-based Starlink deployments and reflect how eager SpaceX is to transition Starlink launches to its next-generation rocket. Currently, SpaceX relies on the Falcon 9 to launch its Starlink Vive 2 mini-satellites. However, the company plans to shift to the larger and more capable Starlink 5 3 satellites, which are too heavy for Falcon 9, but well-suited to Starship's superior payload capacity. Each Starlink AVE-E3 launch aboard Starship is expected to add around 60 terabits per second BPs of bandwidth to the Starlink network. This is more than 20 times the capacity added by a single Falcon 9 V2 mini launch. In fact, a single next-generation satellite launched on Starship will offer roughly the same capacity as an entire Falcon 9 mission carrying about 20 V2 mini satellites. These larger, more advanced satellites will also provide more than 10 times the downlink capacity of the current versions. This means they can deliver faster data speeds to more users on the ground. With over 6,000 Starlink satellites already in orbit, this upgrade could significantly boost performance and expand coverage. While this flight is already critical for testing Starship's hardware upgrades and demonstrating its heavy lift capabilities, it also marks an important moment in SpaceX's effort to transform global connectivity. It highlights how far ahead Starlink is compared to competitors such as Amazon's upcoming Kuiper Constellation and serves as a strong example of how rapidly commercial spaceflight is changing the standards and practices that legacy aerospace contractors have followed for decades. The development of Starship is a bold kind of madness the world has never seen. In just a few short years, it has gone from a massive metal prototype, once jokingly called a flying water tower that could barely reach orbital velocity, to actually making it there. What started as a partially reusable rocket is now on its way to becoming fully reusable. And that's just the beginning. The end goal is a vehicle capable of taking us to other planets. The evolution of Starship isn't just engineering, it's history in the making, and right now, it's one of the most thrilling stories unfolding before our eyes.